Jia Hao, Ni Hao Ma. Hello, everyone. I am so excited to be speaking with you today about how Team Cloud Native is shining bright in China. If you don't know me, my name is Priyanka Sharma, and I'm the executive director of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. So one thing you should know about me is that I spend a lot of time on social media. <laughs> and you can find me there anytime you would like to start a conversation, either on Twitter or WeChat. And my handle is Pritianka, and you can see the spelling there. I've also copied my QR code for WeChat that you can use to get in touch at any time. Team Cloud Native is who I serve every day, and so I would love to hear from you. I'm so thrilled to be here talking to you, to welcome you to KubeCon Cloud Native Con China. Finally, this is happening. I am so thrilled we're able to get together. You know, of course, all of us, we hope and wish we were meeting in person. Right. I wish we were. I was on a stage in Shanghai or Beijing or Hangzhou, anywhere in China, really, and hanging out with you all and enjoying your hospitality, enjoying the lovely culture, the lovely food, and the talking about the great technologies. But you know, such is the way of life, and we must make do with what we have. And I'm so thrilled that you are taking the time out of your busy days to engage with us here in this format. You know, um, a month ago, we were able to meet in Los Angeles for KubeCon Cloud Native Con North America. It was the first hybrid event we have ever done. And the first time we met in person after this global pandemic. It was such an amazing experience. We all really miss those of you who could not make it in person. And I hope the time when we hang out again, whether it's in China, whether it's in our Europe KubeCon, whether it's in the North America one, comes soon for the sake of all of us. <laughs> you know, it was, it was an interesting experience because while there were so many things different because of how life has changed because of the pandemic, the one thing was constant. Team Cloud Native gained strength from each other. People come together and collaborate and create things no one has ever seen before. And this face-to-face -face interaction is worth everything. Since you folks could not make it, I would like to recap some key announcements from the North America event. You may have seen some of this if you watched virtually or read some of our coverage, but I would like to underscore the highlights so that all of us in Team Cloud Native are moving together in the same rhythm together. Many of you may remember Dan Kahn, who was the founding executive director of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Sadly, Dan is no longer with us in this world, but he has done so much that people continue to benefit from his legacy, from all the efforts he did. And to honor him, we have changed the KubeCon Cloud Native Con Scholarship Fund to the Dan Khan Scholarship Fund to help those who may need assistance to attend our flagship events around the world from anywhere around the world, whether it be a diversity scholarship or a need-based scholarship. These scholarships have changed lives. People have had new experiences, gotten new opportunities, they've gotten mentorship, and they have embedded themselves in the cloud native ecosystem and now continue to give back to others. This fund intends to keep that tradition alive for a long time to come. Another announcement I made was around the Cloud Native Credits Program. This is a program by which companies can donate resources, whether they are CI credits, compute resources, or even cash donations, to help CNCF projects with their infrastructure needs. This program exists to provide security for the CNCF projects to know that they will be able to get infrastructure resources when they need them. If you find this interesting and would like to support our projects, please feel free to get in touch and we would love to create a, a program with you. I am so pleased to tell you that a lot of Chinese companies are already engaging with me and I hope to share cool results and great donations in the next KubeCons to come. If you're a project, this is also very useful for you because you can request resources for things you need as you run some of the most critical 
uh, technologies and pro projects and products in the world. Now, when we think of all the great things Team Cloud Native has done, one thing is at the core of what we do. It is our skills. It is our pro. It is the output that we produce. As we grow, as the whole world joins us to be cloud native, we need to standardize our skill sets. CNCF supports every individual and company and organization out there by offering certifications to level set and offer guidance around people's skill levels. We have the uh, certified Kubernetes uh, application developer, certified Kubernetes admin, certified Kubernetes security specialist exams already out there. And today, and now we have recently announced the Kubernetes and Cloud Native Associate Certification. This certification is a brand new offering to help people who are completely new to the Cloud Native ecosystem learn the basics and be able to enmesh themselves in our community. This exam is available now, and I highly encourage all kinds of folks, whether you're a new marketer joining a cloud native products and services team, whether you are a lawyer on an end user company, whether you're a product manager, business development professional, take this exam so you can start speaking the language of cloud native. And finally, on the fun side, we, if you know, we have Pippi and friends as the cute characters who have created a cartoon book around to show how Pippi, a PHP app, modernizing, modernizes herself. Pippi now has new friends. Linky the lobster, which represents the Linkerd project, and Hazel the hedgehog, that represents the Helm project. Pippi's friend circle is growing big and wide, and she and all of them are having a great time exploring cloud native ecosystems. Just like Pippi's friend circle is growing, we in Time Cloud Native, Team Cloud Native are growing. The power of our community is growing. And the reason for that, that the reason that the power of us continues to grow is because the definition of us continues to change. As folks know, the pandemic changed everything for the whole world. One of the things it did was ensure every company needed to be a digital company. Every company needed to be a technology company. For that, they needed to ship fast, resiliently, with minimum toil. And guess who specializes in that? Team Cloud Native. So the folks who have joined us today, yesterday, last year, everyone who's coming in is increasing our ranks. And it behooves us to welcome them, to help them settle in, to show them the ropes, to learn from them, and to be respectful of their backgrounds and their what they have to share. This is how the power of us will keep growing. You know, this is what we hope, but this is also what we see happening in the world around us. As I shared in my North America keynote, the number of projects from 2019 to 2021 May grew from 44 to 96. The number of contributors grew from 81,000 to 123,000. And the number of countries they represented grew from 164 to 177. These are amazing growth figures for a two year period. But then in the last six months, from May to October, we grew from 96 projects to 114, from 123,000 contributors to 137,000 contributors, and from 177 countries to 186 countries represented. Just in a period of six months, that's the kind of momentum we are seeing. Cloud native is essential to everyone, and these numbers are proving that. Team cloud native in China is no exception. The country is on a roll, and your momentum is impressive. Again, the numbers say it all. When we look at the members in China, they have grown to 80 today, which is a 55% growth from last year. Projects have grown to 25, which is a 100% increase. So I am very comfortable saying that you folks have been very productive. You've been creating amazing new technologies. You've been joining in, supporting the cloud native ecosystem, and kudos to you for that. You should be very proud of everything you have done and accomplished. When we look at contributions, just at Kubernetes, there are so many Chinese companies that are ranked in the top levels of contributors alongside global top companies. Huawei is number seven, ZTE 17, Dow Cloud 21, 
Bowcloud, 27. These are companies, the U, they are joined by companies around the world. The Googles, the VMware's, the SUSE's, the IBM's, the, all kinds of folks from all around the world. And China has a strong presence as the number three contributor to Kubernetes. The same is true for all of cloud native actually, where China is the number two contributor. And so many other companies like from China, such as Pingcap, Alibaba, et cetera, join those ranks of top contributors in the overall cloud native ecosystem. I am so grateful and proud of all your accomplishments. Thank you for giving us your time, your effort, your commitment. Together, we are showing what a global community looks like. And we are the example that everybody wants to follow. Thank you for being such amazing partners in this journey. Many people are appreciative of our journey. And so I'm very proud to announce a new gold member that is joining us from China, and they are H3C. H3C is going to be part of the cloud native ecosystem and do great things with us. And they asked if I would share a message from them. So I would like to read it out to you. According to H3C, they see a new era of cloud native technologies with Kubernetes as its core, service mesh, Prometheus, DevOps, and all of the cultural elements. Therefore, H3C actively participates in the CNCF community and works hard to contribute. They provide a full stack cloud platform which aggregates AI, big data, IoT, and other technical capabilities and, and help the various industries out there. With the help of powerful computing power, massive storage, and intelligent data analysis methods, the cloud platform helps users timely deliver outstanding applications and functions in complex and diverse uh, environments. They provide support for critical IT initiatives, such as containerization and microservices, which we all understand, and help users with digital transformation. This is something that everyone is doing right now, as I told you. They believe that by joining CNCF as a goal member, it is a new beginning, and they will continue to contribute to the community, absorb the nutrition of the community ecosystem, and continue to serve enterprise users. Big congratulations for joining us, H3C. We are so proud to be with you in this journey. Thank you. You know, as, as H3C said in their announcement, Things are changing. New things are happening. There's IoT, there's uh, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and the world is growing and building, but all this is built on cloud native. And that's why we are such a critical, powerful community in the world. There are key new verticals today, right? Like AIML is a great one. I mean, I look at the AIML, there are so many projects in CNCF that are there to support people in their AIML workloads are running on cloud native. These three projects that I have listed here, Fluid, KubeDL, Volcano, are from all are from China and they are part of CNCF supporting AIML workloads. This is the kind of innovation that is happening. When we think of edge computing, which is taking the world by a storm, there are projects like Cube Edge, Super Edge, Wasm Edge Rush Runtime, Open Yurt, all again from China. China is a force of innovation in CNCF, and I'm so proud of all the achievements that you have. I think the results are showing already. Just recently, I just saw this tweet from Kevin, which talks about how they're celebrating three years on Cube Edge, and they're already inside a vehicle. What vehicle, you might ask? Well, currently, there are 200,000 200, SUVs produced every year that are running with Cube Edge in them. And this number is expected to skyrocket. The SAIC, the company, the largest car manufacturer in China, the number eight in the world is using Cube Edge in their SUVs. And that's how this has happened. And they plan to bring it to other models. And they like Cube Edge because of the lightweight architecture, the fact that it's optimized for unstable cloud edge networks at scale, and it simplifies the heterogeneous IoT device management and gives edge autonomy when a vehicle gets offline. This is the kind of impact we're talking about. We've moved from the early days of web scale applications and 
you know, those, those kinds of products to cars, planes, trains, submarines even. And that's the impact of cloud native. This is just the beginning, folks. Soon we will be in workloads that we haven't even thought of yet. As all this exciting change happens, we must remember that Kubernetes is our forever friend. What I mean by, by that is that Kubernetes is ubiquitous. Kubernetes is mature and it is used and known of by most people out there. Awareness among backend, backend developers about container and Kubernetes is skyrocketing. Um, and if you look at um, large companies, the usage of Kubernetes is so high and keeps on growing. And you have some stats here that you can see from research we did that will tell you about it. Talking about the future yet again, two and three edge developers now use Kubernetes. And I believe this number will just continue to grow. Because of that, I believe China and the world is committed to Kubernetes. Today, we have 42 Kubernetes certified service providers in greater China, 12 Kubernetes training partners, and 34 certified Kubernetes providers. These are amazing numbers. These, this means that there are many options for people to choose from. As all this is happening, I have one ask of you. I think when we look at certified professionals in China, folks who are certified for CKA, CCAD, CKS, or KCNA, there's only 5,000 people. In a country with tens of millions of developers, if not 30s of millions, this is a very small number. Let's commit to all of us get the China numbers up to 7,000 next year. This is my challenge to you, and I hope you will rise up to it and take it and make me proud by end of next year where I will announce the numbers. With that said, we must celebrate China's contributions. I think of so many image, amazing people in the community who are from the China, greater China region. There's Brian Che on my board. There is Jimmy Stone. There's Queenie Jin in the community. Mark Lee, Hainang Henry Zhang, Kevin Meng, Julia Han, Zhang Li. So many people doing amazing things. And to you, I say thank you. As a celebration of all uh, a great Chinese project, Thai Kiwi, I would also like to introduce you another Pippi character, Tiago. Tiago the tiger is adorable and cute and people like, it, like him. And the Thai is similar to Thai in Thai Kiwi. And so the project is super excited to make, make Tiago their symbol and in, create lots of cute things for uh, all of us to enjoy with Tiago. Look out for Tiago Schwag in the future. Next year, I hope you will join us and continue the conversation. Be, keep being part of this global community with our events in Valencia and Detroit. You can join in person or virtually. And of course, after, along the way, there will be many Kubernetes community days for China along the way all through the year. And finally, we're working out the details for KubeCon China next year. With all that said, Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for being a part of the Cloud Native ecosystem and being such an amazing member of Team Cloud Native. Please enjoy the show. And now, wait to listen from Jim Zemlin, the Executive Director of the Linux Foundation. Please welcome Jim Zemlin. Thank you so much. Have a great day and a great show. <laughs>